Australia is a harsh place to live. Top 10 deadliest spiders? Yeah, we're number one and two, thank you very much. Snakes? Yeah, probably also those. Bogans? We've got the highest bogan per capita in the world. Australia makes for tough people and it also makes for tough woods. Did you know, and this is a true story, that early American hand tools, chisels and plane blades are actually just Australian woods shaped to look like chisels and planes? Hard maple? More like not all that hard maple. White oak, more like mildly attractive styrofoam. Not just content to work with woods that are often described as tough as rocks, sometimes we even put rocks in our wood to just prove how tough we are. For this project you're going to want some very specific things. Uh, some stones, it's hard to do stone inlay without stones. I'm using uh, azurite, azurite, that's a blue coloured stone mostly. Uh, and it comes in a few different sizes and you actually need the small size as well as the big size. The small size fills in a lot of the gaps and you can make the small size by just crushing up the big size with a hammer. It, that works. I'd also recommend washing the stones if you bought these. Just let them soak and drain and then sieve out. Uh, otherwise they'll be a bit of a grey, dusty, dirty colour which doesn't look that great. You'll also want a very small end mill or router bit. This is a 1 16th of an inch or about 1.5 millimeter bit. Uh, the detail you can get in the pocket that you carve out is gonna be limited by the radius or diameter of the router bit. So I can get down to 1.5 millimeter detail. If I used a larger bit, a quarter inch bit or 6.35 millimeter, it'd be very bulky and you wouldn't get the fine detail. You'll also want some sort of super glue. Uh, preferably you're going to have a couple of different viscosities, so thin and a thick. The thin is for wicking down between all the gaps when you're using the finer stones, the thick so that it doesn't absorb too quickly. And ideally you'll use some sort of spray activator to make it activate quicker so that when you're ready for it to set, it sets. And that brings us to this video sponsor, me. I had a real sponsor actually lined up for this video. It's going to be great and then as I was reading the contract they pulled the contract but I'd already shot a bunch of video so you get the video without the advertising but go to the thewoodnight.com and get all of your wood night needs need a wood squire get one of those need a wood knight he's also there the first, first step is to actually get the design onto the wood. For this I'm using transfer paper, specifically carbon transfer paper, not graphite paper, as graphite paper doesn't transfer to wood very clearly. The design is taped on one edge to act as a hinge, then a sheet of carbon paper is placed underneath. Then just trace over your design and it will transfer. Once it's done, it's pretty clear. The second first step is to cut out the pocket for the stones to go into. Depending on the design, this can be tedious to use a 1 8 of an inch or smaller bit. The depth will depend on the size of stones you're using. Small bits like this aren't too grabby, so they're pretty easy to control to freehand round. A downcut spiral bit is the best choice, but really any straight bit will work. With the pocket cut, the pocket is sealed with some shellac. Unfortunately, I don't have clear shellac at the moment, only this tinted primer shellac, but it will do the job for now. Sealing it stops the CA from absorbing too quickly before stones are in place. I have two different sizes of stones. The smaller ones are good for filling gaps and small details. The large ones will fill the majority of the body. I'm using thick CA to lay down a bed of glue for the larger stones to bond to. A spray of activator sets off the glue. The process is repeated with more stones working small sections at a time.
knock off any excess into a container to use in the future. Try and scrape as much excess off as possible, just so it's easier to level it later. To fill the gaps, this time the smaller stones are put in place, then the whole area has drops of thin CA put on top. The thinner glue will wick between the smaller stones and bond, whereas the thicker glue may just form a film layer. Though it shouldn't surprise me, this carbide scraper I made actually does a pretty good job of scraping back the azurite. If you persisted with this, you could get it pretty close to flat before switching to sanding. Another way to level the stones is just to sand them flat. Standard sanding discs will work, but harder wearing ceramic discs or silicon carbide discs will do better. Silicon carbide discs are probably the best choice for this, but they typically don't have holes for dust collection in them. Perhaps it's cheating, but an even better way is to use a drum sander to knock off the majority of the stones. You'll need to take many shallow passes, but comparatively, the whole thing goes very fast. After the high spots are knocked back, you may find empty pockets appear. Using the smaller sized stones, those can be filled and then glued down with thin CA. Once dried, it's back to the drum sander until flat. This process may need to be repeated a couple of times while flattening to get a nice smooth surface. With it all leveled, I can get onto a final sanding pass. This is sanding the stones and the wood up to 220 grit. As this is more of a test than anything, I'm giving it a quick coat of orange tongue oil. To make this look like an actual project, I'm going to be turning it into a pencil box, and for that I need to make a quick box. Simple box joints are fast and easy. I'm using the Incra iBox, but I'm not sure anybody wants to hear me talk about another jig. box needs a groove for a floating panel and sliding lid. My small parts routing jig version 2 is still my favourite way to make plunge cuts with a router on small parts. So much for not talking about another jig. It's hard to see but the non-through groove is being cut, stopping in the actual box joint fingers, so this groove will always be hidden. Add a leftover panel from a previous project to cut down. Rather than widening the slot to fit the lid, I'm rebating the underside of the lid at the router table. Using a thicknesser made me a little bit too nervous because of the embedded stones. For the lid to slide out, part of the front needs to be cut off. Before glue up, the inside surface is scraped to a finish level. This is much easier than trying to sand after glue up. box is glued up now, the joints are proud though and I want to flush trim them off. I find the easiest way to do that is here at the table saw using this L fence and just a regular table saw blade. So the way that the L fence works is that it attaches to your regular table saw fence, it's just clamped on, and this section here can move up and down. You move the fence on your table saw left and right to line it up with the edge of the blade. In this case, if I take a regular piece of wood and slide it along the fence, we can see the blade doesn't move, but if I take the box that I need to trim, the blade will move as it's contacting the excess joint there so that we need to trim off. Then a month and a move of house and workshop happened. The box just needs a final sanding before finishing. Paper cloth with metho on it helps remove some of the dust left behind. I find Jarro is always so dusty. To match the lid, orange tongue oil is used as a finish which really makes the Jarro pop. 
This is coming out pretty nice. I have messed a couple of things up. I should have had the joiner going the other way in that the, for the box joins, the uh, first piece should have been the short edge and then the long edge should have referenced off that. That would have meant the uh, box joints would have been on top for the ends on the corners and I could have sliced that off and use that as a handle for this. Uh, and I also cut this a little bit short, so it's just not ideal, but the point of the project was the inlay, the stone inlay, not the box itself. So this will go to a friend who really enjoys this character, uh, the, or the board game associated with this character, it's for Flamecraft, so hopefully she'll quite enjoy that. Stone inlay is a fun thing to do, it gives a relatively unique look Probably wouldn't go for the azurite, but go for maybe crushed opal or something like that because it comes in a much larger range of colours and isn't too expensive for this sort of size. Details like this stone inlay or uh, veneer marquetry, parquetry or stringing really make furniture and craft items pop where appropriate. You may not see this on a dining table, but on an occasional table, hall table, boxes, cabinet doors, they can add a really nice personal touch to whatever you're making. So give it a shot, not too hard, and the results can be pretty nice. Thanks for watching.